Well, good evening and welcome to this very last Wednesday evening Bible study here at Mars Hill Baptist Church in Hillsboro, North Carolina. My name is Daniel Gregory. I'm so glad that you have joined with us this evening. We do hope the Lord blesses you through our study tonight. We're going to jump right into our study, but I will encourage you to go ahead and uh, stick around right after the message. I do have just a few important announcements. Tonight, we are studying New Year's resolutions, specifically new commitments for the new year. You know, when we think about it, this is that time of the year where we think about the new year in front of us, and a lot of us make those New Year's resolutions. Uh, one of the most common ones has to do with exercise or eating right. Uh, a lot of us make a, a, a resolution to read more, uh, maybe just to, to do something a little bit better in the year ahead. But tonight I want to talk to you about four commitments, four resolutions that you can make that will utterly and completely change your life. You know, you think about it, if you make that commitment, you make that resolution to eat better or uh, to exercise more, maybe to read more, or maybe to stop something bad that you're doing, or maybe to pick up something good in your life, they will really help your life. You'll be blessed throughout the year as you do them, but you know, it might not radically and utterly change your life completely. Well, in the Bible, in God's Word, we can find four simple commitments, uh, encouragements that God's Word employs us to do, implores us to do, and in doing them, we can see that in the year 2021, our life would be utterly and radically changed. And that's what we're going to be looking at tonight. We've got a couple of different uh, scriptures within the New Testament and we're going to look at them and see what they're calling all Christians to. What God desires from all of his children's lives. These are commitments that we can make as we go into this new year that I promise will be amazing for us. They will radically change your life. They will utterly change your life for the better. Number one is this. Commit yourself to forget your failures. Commit yourself to forget your failures. Almost 2,000 years ago, the Apostle Paul wrote something so relevant for us in the world in which we live in today. It's found in Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. It says this, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. What amazing advice for us as we leave 2020 and go into 2021. The fact that God is here present with us in this world and offers us the opportunity to forget what is behind us all of our past failures, all of our shortcomings of the past, and to press forward into the future that God has given to us. And you know what? When we think about that idea of forgetting what is behind, of, of letting go of our past, sometimes it's a very difficult thing to do. I remember the very last car that I owned. I had it uh, here at the church, and I was backing up uh, out of the church uh, parking lot area, and I somehow scraped the side of the car against something, and it left a mark on the side of the vehicle. Now, I could take it home, and I could wash the car, I could wax it, I could buff it, and, and it actually made that little spot look not nearly uh, as visible. But you know what? I knew it was there. You know what I did? I beat myself up like nobody's business going, oh no, look at what I've done, look at that terrible thing, and it, it bogged me down. Do you know why? Because I looked at it as a failure of my past, and I knew it's never able to go forward in that time. I was never able to move forward in what I was doing. That is the poison of what failures are. 
That is uh, something that sticks with you and that eats away at your very soul. Listen, each and every one of us, whether it is in 2020 or in years before that, we have all failed. We've all failed in our life. It could be you're looking at a failure in your life morally or ethically, something at work, something in your family, something in your personal life. And you know what? Those failures that you have might not be recorded on TV. It might not uh, be the, the uh, subject of a movie or it might not be in the newspaper, but it's in your heart. And you know what? It has the ability to eat away at your soul if you refuse to more move forward. Many of us have failures that are painful memories of wrong decisions that we have made. What God's Word is saying here is that God, by His mighty power, for the forgiveness that we find in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, what we find in Christ is forgiveness in the ability to move forward in our life. We find forgiveness in the blood of Jesus Christ when we come to Him, when we acknowledge our failures, when we acknowledge those things that we have done wrong before others in, in the sight of God. And we come and we plead the blood of Jesus. And we say, Lord, please forgive me. What God empowers us then to do is to say, you know what? God has forgiven me. Those things are in the past and they no longer have control over me. I'm not going to torture myself anymore for what I did or I didn't do. On the cross, Jesus died and he took all my failures. He took all my sins. And I'm going to look at that and say, you know what? God has forgiven me. Therefore, I can forgive myself and I can forget the failures of my past. Friends, is that what you need to do tonight? Is that something that you yourself need to do? Do you need to go and look in your past and say, you know what, all of these things have been bogging me down. And what I need to do is the same thing God has done in my life. He need, I need to look at those and say, you know what, they're under the blood of Christ. Those failures of my past, I'll learn from them. I'm not going to deny them because they did happen, but you know what? I'm going to look at them the way God looks at them, as forgiven and I'm broken free from them. And I'm going to go into 2021 living my life free from them for the glory of God. The first commitment, the first New Year's resolution, as it were, commit yourself to forget your failures. Which, by the way, that of course can take a while. That could be something that you take all year to do. But you know what? With God's help, you can get your mind trained to look at it the way God looks at it. You can get your life to acknowledge that. And I promise you, you will be all the better for it. Commit yourself to forget your failures. But also, number two, commit yourself to give up your grudges. Commit yourself to give up your grudges. I'm going to give you one of the passages within the New Testament that is the, one of the most powerful passages you can read in the New Testament, but it's also one of the most challenging and difficult for anyone to accept and live out in their life. It comes in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 13. Listen to what the Word of God tells us. Bearing with one another and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Did you catch that challenge? Those difficult words for us to accept into our life? God in these words are challenging each and every one of us that if we have a grudge, if we have someone who has wronged us, that we, in our life, are to offer them forgiveness. Do you know what a grudge is? A grudge is a deep, ongoing resentment that we cultivate in our hearts against someone else. A grudge is an unforgiving spirit that nurtures unlike in another, uh, for another person. It is a nursing of a dislike for someone else. And you know what? Grudges can be some of the most dangerous things 
to leave within our life. Grudges destroy marriages. They break up families. They destroy churches. They ruin friendships. And let's be honest. It doesn't matter what denomination you're talking about. It doesn't matter what church you are talking about. But grudges have been one of the most destructive forces within the church of Jesus Christ when we have two people unwilling to go across the aisle and say, you know what? I was wrong. I hurt you. That was wrong and I need forgiveness. I know as a minister, I have known so many people with grudges in their heart that act like an acid to their soul, just eating away at them over and over and over again, year after year, and it hurts them and it hurts others that are around. Because remember this, grudges are not just destructive, they are self-destructive. In 2013, you might remember this, in Centennial, Colorado, there was a school shooting. An 18-year-old came onto campus and shot another student and ended up turning that gun on themselves. The police began digging in and began doing an investigation. And you know what they found out? That particular student had a grudge against another teacher. That grudge led to destructive in self-destructive behavior. We go on even to last year in 2019 in Thailand. This, this was one of those stories that I had to read two or three times to try, to try and let everything sink in. It came to find out that in 2019, there was a group of students celebrating a 50-year class reunion. They got together at a restaurant. They shared food. They were eating desserts. And there were two students that went to school together some 50 years prior. And one student went up to another one and said, you bullied me in high school. You need to ask forgiveness. This other individual, being 50 years removed from the situation, said, I don't even remember this. I don't remember me doing that. I don't remember any of those things. And they got into an argument. And this one student that was accusing this other one of bullying pulled out a gun and shot this person he was in school with 50 years ago. A grudge. A 50-year grudge destroyed two lives that day. Make no mistake about it. A grudge will destroy you. A grudge, if you harbor it in your heart, can destroy you physically, mentally, and spiritually. Do you remember Jesus telling the parable of the servant that was forgiven the huge debt? He had basically racked up this insurmountable debt. And he goes to the king, and the king miraculously, graciously, mercifully saying, all right, you're, you're forgiven. You're fine. You could never, ever, ever pay this, but that's okay. I forgive you. He leaves there and then finds a friend that owes him a few dollars. And he's basically choking him, saying, pay me everything. The king goes back and finds out what happens. And he said, you are so ungrateful. You are forgiven this huge, amazing debt. And you can't even treat your brother right. Your friend right. Max Lucado, the Christian author, makes an interesting comment in one of his, one of his books talking about this. He says, unforgiving servants always end up in prison. The prison of anger, of guilt, and depression. God says this to us in his word. Don't sentence yourself to a prison because of a grudge that you just want to keep. Don't sentence yourself to prison because you are unwilling to say, I'm sorry. You're unwilling to give forgiveness to another. Notice what God is saying in his word. He's not saying ignore what happened. 
He's not saying deny what happened. He's not saying anything like that. He doesn't ask us to condone it or pretend that it didn't matter. What he asks us to do is to forgive the grievance against us, to acknowledge how wrong and painful it was, but to decide to forgive the person who did the wrong to you. You know, I'm absolutely convinced of this. I know that this video is not going to get 100 million views on YouTube or on our website, but I know this, that there is somebody that is listening to this video that has a grudge in their life. There is somebody in your family, a friend, a coworker, there is somebody that you know that you are harboring a grudge against. And God is talking to you right now saying, you know what? You need to let it go. You need to ask forgiveness. You need to do what you can to mend that relationship. You've got to give up that grudge. And friends, I guarantee this, that when you do, your life will be so much better. Holding onto a grudge is like embracing shards of glass. It doesn't do anything but hurt the person holding on to it. You know, you might be in your, in your life saying, you know what, I, you don't know what has been done to me. You're right, I don't. God does. And here I'm going to give you some straight talk. It might be something so difficult to hear, you might want to turn this video off, but I'm going to give it to you very straight. When you're crying out, God, I can't forgive that person because of this. I can't give up my grudge because of what they're doing. What you're really saying is, God, I refuse to. God, I refuse to forgive because here's the thing. God in heaven looked down at you with all of your sin, with everything that you did that nailed Jesus Christ to the cross. And what did he say? Come to me and I'll give you forgiveness. Ask and it'll be forgiven you. And I'll wash you under the precious blood of Jesus Christ. That amazing and utterly tremendous forgiveness was given to you. And that power, that ability, that Spirit of God lives within you to be able to forgive. Now, it could be that you go and go, you know what, I don't want to, but I want to try and I need God's help. You know what, so many times in this life, we need to beg and plead God, God, I need just a little bit more strength. God, I need you to work through me. I've said many a time, we can get muscle memory within our life spiritually. It could be you've been holding on to a, a, a grudge. It could be you've been holding on for a, a year, a decade. It could be 50 years you have been holding on to something against someone. And you know, just as in the physical realm, our mind tells our fist, keep, keep clenching, keep grabbing hold. And you know what? That becomes the natural way our fist wants to be. Well, spiritually, the same thing can happen. We hold on to a grudge. We hold on to that anger. And we don't know anything else. And you know what we have to do? We have to say, Lord, I need you to teach me a different way. I encourage you as you enter into 2021 to go and make that very, very difficult phone call. Go and write that very, very difficult letter. Go to that house and knock on the door and say the very difficult words. I did wrong and I hurt you. And you know what? I understand if you don't want to forgive me, but I'm going to ask you, please forgive me. I was wrong. And I'm sorry. And I guarantee 2021 will be a year like no other. Commit yourself to forgive your failures. Commit yourself to give up your grudges. But also, number three, commit yourself to restore your relationships. Commit yourself to restore your relationships. You know, when you go to work or uh, you get up in the morning and you turn your computer on. Uh, you might be like me. You, you have a virus software that kind of pops up. And a lot of times it says, hey, we've updated 
do you want to scan your computer? Well, it, it's asking you, do you want to make sure everything is okay in your, in your files, in your programs? You know what? God asks us a lot of the same things in our own life. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 18, it says this, If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Live peaceably with all. The important phrase there is as far as it depends on you. God, by using that phrase, is personally challenging you and I. It's personally challenging us to look out into all of the relationships within our life and make sure everything is as good as it possibly can be. Now, to be true, I want to make sure we understand this. There might be some relationships in your life right now, and you're not holding a grudge against someone else, but rather you know there's somebody out there that has done something wrong to you they have followed a pathway of sin. They have hurt. They have abused. And you know that no matter what you do, there's no way you can mend that relationship. In fact, even to do that would bring harm to you and to your family. That's not what this is talking about. When it's saying, you know, if it is possible, there's certain relationships that it's not. But you know what? There are certain relationships where it is. There are certain relationships where you can go and mend that fence. Maybe God is saying to some of you that this is the year to bring that change, to restore a relationship, to reach out to somebody that you haven't spoken with in a year or two, to make things right between a friend that isn't your friend any longer. Make no mistake, it is hard to do. But you know what? It is all the better. When we stand up and say, you know what? The relationships that I have, the friendships that I have, are in a right relationship. Not only does that bring joy to your heart, it brings God joy as well. Commit yourself to forget your failures. To commit yourself to give up your grudges. To commit yourself to restore your relationships. Finally this, and probably the most difficult, commit yourself to turn your back on your transgressions. Commit yourself to turn your back on your transgressions. It's very uh, interesting. If you read a lot of history of the Civil War, you'll find something very interesting that happened after the war. After the Emancipation Proclamation that was, was given, in all of the enslaved persons within the United States were set free, many of those individuals decided to stay exactly where they were. They chose not to leave their enslavement, but work for the same individuals they worked for, to do the exact same things that they had been doing. They were set free, but they chose to live as an enslaved person. The New Testament says that's exactly how many Christians live. That even though they have been set free by the power of Jesus Christ, they've been set free from the power of sin, yet they still live within that little rut. They still live with sins in their life. Notice what Romans chapter 6 says. I'm reading in the New Living Translation, verses 12 through 14. Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourself completely to God, for you are dead. But now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin is no longer your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. 
If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have been set free from the power of sin. Now, if you're anything like anyone else, when we come to Christ as our Lord and Savior, so many of those old sins just fall away. We don't have any problem whatsoever shedding them out of our life. I don't have to worry about this or that or the other. But you know what? There are sometimes those sins that just dig in and grab a hold of us. And rather than pushing them away, they just start becoming a habit within our life. For those of you that are around the Hillsborough area, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about uh, when I say that there's a Walgreens about a mile and a half, give or take, away from here at the church. It's the pharmacy that my family uses, and a lot of times we go by there and we'll pick up a prescription. But our, our, one of the most common things that we do is we will go, my wife and I will go out and we'll pick our little girl up at school and then we'll be heading back down Highway 70. Now Highway 70 intersects with Highway 86. Many of y'all know exactly where I'm talking about, where the gas station is and where everything is uh, over, over in Hillsboro. Now to get back home at that stoplight, I need to turn left. To be able to go to Walgreens, I need to go straight. And I can know in my mind, I've got to go to Walgreens. My wife can tell me, hey, don't forget, got to go to Walgreens. I could have written down a note. I could have written it on my hand. But lo and behold, I get up to that stoplight, and what do I do? I turn left. Why? Because it is the normal, regular thing of my life. It is the regular, normal habit that I have gotten into. You know what happens to our Christian life? A sin that is just incorporated into us becomes a besetting sin. It's an old uh, term that is used by Christian authors. It's a term that is used for those things that just get into our life. And it's so hard to get out of. Rather than attacking it and pushing it away, we just kind of learn to live with it. I knew a gentleman years and years and years ago, when you, got, when you met him, you noticed he walked a little bit funny. He, he kind of had a little bit of a, a stumble almost within him. And what it is, it, is he had bad knees. He had had, a, had some bad knees for, for a while, and the doctors had told him, hey, you need to get knee replacement surgery. That would solve that problem. You wouldn't have that bone on bone. You wouldn't have that pain. You'd be able to get up and go and, and walk and do all the things that you would want to do. But if you talk to him, he'd say, I'm not going to have that done. I, I'm, not, I'm not ready for it yet. I'm not, I don't want to. I don't want to go uh, under the knife and and get knee replacements. It was very interesting. A few months back, I got to see him in Walmart, and lo and behold, he was in one of the carts, unable to get around like he needed to. He was still in pain and still not wanting surgery. You know what, that sums up too many Christians' lives. Just living with the besetting sin and won't do anything about it. Friends, listen, is the Holy Spirit convicting you right now of something in your life that's been bringing you down? A sin that is just festering in your life. And God is telling you, you know what, 2021, get rid of that thing. I've given you the power to break free. Sin no longer has control over you. You need to kick it out. Friends, I would encourage you, make 2021 that year. Make 2021 that year where you say, hey, no more. I'm not going to live with this anymore. I'm going to get it out of my life. That's what God in His Word is challenging us today. Now the question always comes, how in the world do I do it? I've been living with this sin 5, 10, 15 years. I've tried and I've failed. Let me give you four things that I hope will encourage you. 
Because listen, sometimes, yeah, it does take six months. It might take a year. It might take two years. But praise God, if you're able to get victory over that, what a testimony to the power of God working in your life. What an amazing life you'll be able to live without that monkey, without that sin on your back tying you down. Let me give you four, four helps that I, I hope will assist you as you try to break free. Number one is this, seek help. Seek help. Confess your struggle to a dear friend. Confess it to somebody you trust that has a good and godly life that won't bring judgment down upon you, but will come to you and say, brother, I'm so sorry that you are facing that. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to be a, a, your accountability partner. I want to help you through this every step of the way. By the way, you might be one of the ones that are asked about this. And you know what? If somebody is confessing you saying, listen, I've got this addiction, I've got this problem, and I'm trying to break free, don't go down and bring down the thunder upon them and say how horrible they are. Encourage them saying, brother, it took a lot for you to tell me that. It took a lot of courage to come to me. And you know what? I want to be an encouragement to you. You know what you're doing is wrong, and you know what I do too, but you know what? I want you to have victory over this, so I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to keep everything in confidence, but we're going to get through this together that you might have victory over this to the glory of God. Seek that friend that'll pray with you, that'll encourage you, that'll be accountable, and you'll be able to be accountable to them. Number two is this. Set a goal. Set a goal. You know, if it's something like you're saying that you spend way too much money on something, you're living way beyond your means, set a goal. Set a goal as to what you're going to spend, and you're going to say, hey, this is it. This is what I want to do. I want to get out of this sin of materialism. I want to set a goal. Write it down. Write down a goal saying, you know what? I want to no longer use filthy language. And you know what? Write, get, a, uh, get a calendar and write down, hey, look, you know what? January 1st, I made it. I had victory. That is one day. You know what? It might be you're saying, hey, I'm going to go for 10 straight days. I know I might mess up, but you know what? That's my goal. 10 straight days. Whatever it is, Get a goal, write it down, that you might be able to say, hey, look, praise be to God, I have had success. Thirdly is this, get rid of temptations. Get rid of temptations. I've said this many a time. One of my big weaknesses in this life are crunchy, salty snacks. Potato chips, Cheetos, Doritos, you name it, crunchy, salty, oh my goodness, I am weak towards them. And the number one offender, the piece de resistance, as you would say, is Lay's Poppables. Oh my goodness, I cannot open a bag of those without finishing them. They are my biggest weakness. And you know what I gotta do? If they're in the house, I can't know where they are. They gotta be hidden. They got to be out of my sight and out of my mind because what is my mind going to do? I'm going to go run after them. The way I beat that temptation, I got to get rid of it because otherwise I'm going to run after it. Listen, it might be in your house. You got to do some rearranging. You might need to do some throwing out. You might need to be doing some rearranging of things that are in your home to avoid that temptation at all costs. It might be you need to fill up a trash can. It might be that you need to go to your spouse or somebody else and say, look, get rid of this. Go put it somewhere. You can deal with it. I can't. Get, get it out of my sight. I don't want to know where it is because I don't need to have that on my mind. Get rid of temptation. Finally, this. Remember God throughout. Remember God throughout, every step of the way. Pray each and every day, Lord, help me through this. 
Study the Word of God. Even if it, all it is is reading through the book of Proverbs, the book of James. If all it is is reading through the book of Psalms and seeing the, the praises of God on paper and reading through them. Take God with you each and every step of the way. Through prayer, when you have a success, praise be to God. When you have a failure, you go in and say, God, I messed up, but you got me through that far. I know you can get me even further. Put on the radio, put on your uh, earbuds and, and listen to some praise and worship music and have God close by your side each and every step of the way. Friends, listen, through all these things, I know 2021 can be a magnificent year for you spiritually in your life. And I don't know which one of these might have, might have hit a chord with you. It could be about your, your grudges, about forgiveness, about restoring relationships, about turning your back towards sin, whatever it is. It could be you need to forget a, a failure in your life. Would you commit with me right now, saying, Lord, this is, this is my one, or these are my, my two, or it could be all four of them. But right now, I'm going to commit to that to the very best of my ability, for your glory and for your honor, I will follow your word and I will incorporate these things into my life. That 2021 might not only be a good year, but a godly year that will bring glory to you. Bow with me in a word of prayer. Almighty God, I pray now for each and every heart that is committing to you right now. As we have this new year upon us, we've been waiting for 2021 uh, for a long, long time, ever since March. Lord, we pray that as we enter into this new year, it be a great year, that it also would be a godly year in which you would receive the glory and honor in all things, in which our lives would be changed, in which our lives would be drawn close to you. I pray for those that are trying to leave their failures in their past. Help them to live on that foundation of the cross of Jesus Christ, that you have given forgiveness. Father, for those that are going to restore a relationship to let go of a grudge, I pray that by your supernatural power, you would allow these things to occur. And for all of those that are going to be leaving behind their sin, to drop it from their life, I pray that you would give your presence, your strength to them. That in the struggle that is ahead, you would give victory. That in all things, you would receive the glory and the honor. Lord, we look forward to what you will do in 2021. Lord, it is in your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for watching this evening. We do hope that the Lord blessed you through our lesson tonight. I have just a few announcements. Uh, this coming Sunday, January 3rd, we have a very special guest speaker. Uh, Dr. Randy Adams will come and give the 11 o'clock message this coming Sunday. It will be broadcast uh, through the um, Facebook Live. We uh, finally got that figured out, so that will be available. Uh, but I did want to let everyone know we have a very special guest speaker uh, that will be uh, here on the 3rd of January, so please keep that in mind. Um, also, as we do have a, a new coming year, and we've had a, a couple of people inquire in the church office about this, um, there will be uh, a calendar of the flowers for 2021 uh, available. It's a tentative schedule and all. Um, that'll be in the bulletin uh, this coming Sunday. But also, if you need a copy of it, just give the, uh, the office a call, 919-732-2041. Uh, uh, just talk to Stephanie or leave her a message and she'll get that to you, but we will have those available. Also, for anyone who is wishing to get a hold of their Sunday school material, uh, that is in our church fellowship hall. If you give the church a call, um, if you don't really want to get out of your car or you want to do that without contact 
uh, of anyone, just give Stephanie a call uh, in the office and she can arrange that, put that in the vestibule for you so you can pick that up. You don't have to worry about interacting with uh, anyone. Uh, also, a uh, big thank you to all of the kind words said for our uh, candlelight communion service. Um, for anyone that might have missed the opportunity to watch that, uh, you might have been out of town or just uh, having the busyness of Christmas, but you still wanted to partake of communion, uh, I'm going to leave uh, some of the pre-filled communion cups in the vestibule if you would like to pick uh, some of those up to go ahead and, and watch that and partake of communion, you certainly are welcome to do that. So um, please keep that in mind as well. Also, don't forget we are all uh, we are on all of the social media. We're on Instagram, Twitter, and on Facebook. Please check us out there if you haven't liked us or followed us. Um, we do put announcements up of upcoming things uh, and some inspirational things for you to uh, see as you go through show, uh, social media, some uplifting things there um, that you might enjoy. Um, also, please don't forget you are able to go to marshillbaptistchurch.org, the church's website, and follow all of the different services that we do have. Um, we try to update those as best we can. Uh, if you want to get any of the live services, um, Facebook is the best way to do that as we do stream live at 11 o'clock on Sunday. And I do post these Wednesday night messages right at 7 o'clock so you can get them just as soon as they come out. Um, also, I would encourage you to subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. Um, that way, as soon as something gets posted up there, you can also get it. Our 11 o'clock services do come later because they're not streamed live there. So Facebook, again, is the uh, probably the best place to make sure you're up to date on all of our services. Also at marshillbaptistchurch.org, you can follow us. Uh, you can read any of the articles that we have published, kind of figure out a little bit more about the church. Um, also, there's a link there to our Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, um, but there's also a link there if you would like to give online. Um, you certainly are able to mail in uh, any donations to the church, uh, 1418 NC Highway 57 here in Hillsboro, uh, 27278. Uh, you can drive that by also. We'll gladly receive that. Uh, but if you would like to do an ongoing uh, gift, either every week, every two weeks, or every month, uh, you certainly can do that, or even a one-time gift. Uh, if you'd like to give to the Lighting Moon Christmas offering that goes to International Missions, you certainly are able to do that as well. Through the website, it has a little drop-down menu uh, for wherever your, uh, wherever your gift, uh, you would like that to go. So please keep that in mind as well. Uh, as always, thank you so much for watching tonight, for all of your support. Church, thank you so much for all of your prayers. We need them so much in this time. We're, we're kind of persevering to the end right now uh, in, in trying to get things back to normal. We know we've got a little bit more time left, but we know the Lord's going to get through it. Uh, you know, I, the Lord is with us, and I will not fear. He will get us through this difficult time. If we've said that so, so many times over these past months, we know that he is with us and he's going to get us through. Until that time, be well, be safe, and Lord willing, we will see you soon. Thank you again. Good evening.